It's me, Novak. Djokovic? The funny guy? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, what do you want? Uh, kick your ass. <laughs> Excuse me? Please? Except he didn't say please and he was not funny at all anymore. He's done it again! Oh my, my! Take that! Bob under that like a surgeon. In 2011, Djokovic beat Nadal in seven finals in a row. Seven finals. To this day, Sinner and Alcaraz only played two finals, ever. We're talking four Masters 1000 and three Grand Slam finals in a row. The only way you can get more into someone's head is stealing their wife, kids, house, car, make a guy move right next to you and sip a good tail in front of him next to his former swimming pool every day. The pinnacle of this rivalry came at the Australian Open 2012, when after nearly six hours of an insane display of the highest level of tennis from both players, Djokovic finally beat Nadal in what became an instant classic. When they write the story of the great tennis matches ever played, this one has got to be right up the front of the book. However, Nadal's worst enemy only appeared during the trophy ceremony. Kia CEO, Thomas Ho, who chose to deliver the longest useless speech in history after a six hours match, forcing both players to submit and ask for a chair. The reason behind this act of pure cruelty is still unclear, but a common theory is that Ho, a former mediocre tennis player who once dreamed of greatness, after being humiliated by a Spanish player, swore to himself he would get his revenge and patiently waited orchestrating every perfect move to get to this very moment. <laughs> but we're drifting. Back to Nadal, who wasn't exactly stoked at that point. On top of being repeatedly beaten by Djokovic, his body was starting to crack from all parts. But Rafa is like John Wick, Bruce Willis in Die Hard, or this crazy guy from Snatch Bodies. As in Boris the Bullet Dodger. Yep, that Boris. The more you try to kill him, the more determined he'll come back. Blame Uncle Tony's Spartan training or some weird super resilience genes, but the man is just a different breed. I mean, when a 14-year-old kid grinds through a whole match with a broken little finger and wins it, you can only guess what kind of adult player he's gonna be. To put it simply, staff that would see any normal person spend the rest of their lives between a hospital and a mental institution just made Rafa stronger. So the next 10 years, were a roller coaster. In 2012, his knee forced to withdraw from various tournaments. This was the end. In 2013, he made one of the greatest comeback seasons of all time, beat Djokovic in a thrilling Roland Garros semi-final, which included one of the weirdest deciding moments in all of their confrontations. He's lost the point. And winning 10 titles, including Roland Garros and the US Open. In 2016, he was back to the factory because of wrist injury. He was done. He came back in 2017, won the French Open and the US Open. In 2018, he retired from the Australian Open and the US Open because of some other injuries. I don't know, at some point you lose track. He came back in 2019 and won the French Open and the US Open. Starting to feel like a broken record here. 2021 was bye-bye. His left foot wouldn't let him play anymore. We would never see him again. In 2022, he won the French Open and the Australian Open. Huh. Also, during most of the hard years, he still won Roland Garros most of the time. But then again, Rafa winning Roland Garros is like Zverev losing a Grand Slam final after being the frontrunner. Everyone knows it's gonna happen, and if you're crazy enough to bet against it, you're probably gonna make a lot of money. Anyway, his 2022 Australian Open victory made him finally the man with most slaps. He was on top of the mountain for 15 months. Then you know what happens. <laughs> But in the end, whether Djokovic wins 25, Carlitos 30, or someone else even more, who cares? It will never take away the thrilling, emotional, beautiful, painful, magic, insane moments that Rafa made us live for more than 20 years. So all he's left to say really is, 
Muchas gracias, campeón.